When I first heard about Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, all I could think to myself is, what? Another Dobu Kobo rom-com anime? Ugh. What's the gimmick of this one? She's a Ruski? Come on. First they invade Ukraine, now they want to invade our anime? Nah, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. Then, I saw that this was the most popular non-sequel or franchise-related anime airing in the summer 2024 season, and I just sat there thinking to myself, Huh? Huh? Dogokobo rom-com shows are a dime a dozen. In fact, ro uh, waifu shows in general are always a dime a dozen. But with how popular this show was, it was more popular than both My Dress Up Darling or any of the Rent-A-Girlfriend seasons were while they were airing. So clearly, there must be something worth checking out here, or at the very least, I was too fascinated to see how this thing could get that popular. So I sat down and I gave the show a try. And you know what? Yeah, it, it was pretty funny. Like, first half of this show is pretty damn entertaining. I'm not saying it's like the most revolutionary, incredible thing I've ever seen, but fuck it. It's pretty damn decent. <laughs> Now, many of you may be thinking to yourself, how can that be? Well, let's look at our premise. So, the concept of this show is that class serious girl Alia and class clown Masachika sit next to each other in class. Where, big shocker, it turns out Alia has developed romantic interests in Masachika. Uh, but Masachika is supposed to not realize this because every time Alia says anything cute or flirty to him, she says it in her native language of Russian. However, and big M. Night Shyamalan twist here, Masachika grew up with a Russian friend, so therefore speaks enough conversational Russian to understand the vast majority of what Alia is saying to him. So thus, we have a romantic comedy anime where the setup is based around opposites attract Except one already knows the truth and is not saying anything because reasons. Yeah, I mean, they kind of get into why he doesn't say anything, but it's just kind of the typical, you need to keep the will they want they going. So yeah, based on that, this sounds pretty run of the mill, just Russians. So what makes this show work? Well, first up, let's talk about the animation. I know I knocked Dobu Kobo for having like a typical type of show before, but they do it very well. All of their shows look very nice. They have a nice sense of polish, just look very pretty as a whole. But also, they know when to put energy in when needed. Alia makes a lot of really funny faces in this. Uh, Masachika is always very well animated for his more like goofier moments. And of course, you have Yuki, uh, Masachika's little sister, who uh, is uh, did, did, wants, the, wants the brother. It, in the, the biblical sense. And they always make sure to give those scenes the proper, like, wacky, nonsensical zaniness it needs. So yeah, visually the show conveys what it needs to very well. Uh, no no expenses spared, unlike certain other waifu comedies airing this season. Uh, but yeah, also, the characters are a lot of fun. I already said how the animation helps them, but in general, Everyone has a lot of personality in this. Masachika is great. He's not your typical wet blanket audience surrogate protagonist we see in a lot of waifu comedies. He's fun, he's zany, he's got a lot of personality to him. You 100% see this guy as that class clown who seems way more interested in just like whatever goofy video game he's playing or anything like that than anything important. But you kind of can't help but like him. Like, he's that guy who's just fun to talk to and hang out with. And that works with Alia, who gets an entire episode just dedicated to showing how she's always had to be serious, how she's always felt like she needs to be an overachiever, and how that's always affected her relationship with other kids, and how it's affected her as she's gotten older. And getting to meet someone like him and be around him has really affected her and help her learn to feel more comfortable and get out of her shell. And yeah, I buy that she would get interested in this guy. And also this is both for true the Japanese and the English dub. The dub for this is great. I watched the first several episodes in English because they were out. 
and then switch to sub when I got caught up. And both casts are great. Everyone nails their comedic timing just right. And the romantic chemistry is conveyed very well in both. So I don't think you can really go wrong here either way. Uh, from there, you also just have the incest sister who is so wacky and so over the top and so energetic. Just every fucking scene with her is just funny. So yeah, this show does its job. It's funny. The girls are hot. The romantic chemistry is good. Why did I title this video? Alia sometimes in, uh, hides her feelings in Russian did us dirty. Well, you see, it's actually quite simple. About halfway through this show, give or take, Alia becomes completely fucking irrelevant and the whole show becomes obsessed with this weird sense of melodrama that is so generic and so uninteresting, I'm going to go very in-depth into it. So if you don't want any more spoilers, go leave the video now, watch the show, and come back and join me for this. So this show for me really stops working when the two leads are just not really doing anything with each other anymore. There's cute moments throughout, but the show stops being about their budding romance and their chemistry and just becomes about school politics and just the crap with Masachika and his family. And I feel like it stops working. For starters, a lot of this stuff is played very straight, which is very distracting in a comedy. But on top of all of that, it never does anything to take advantage of what it's set up. So Masachika has this whole sad backstory that he was born to this like uber rich traditionalist family who put a lot of pressure on him until his parents divorced and he went off with his dad. All right, fair enough. But it never really like evolves anywhere past that. You can see how it affects his ability to like to get close to people and want to stand out and succeed but we never really see him grow or change. And I think part of that is Alia never learns this. His romantic interest is blissfully ignorant and completely unaware of everything relating to him for the remainder of the show. How much stronger would this be if he came clean to her about how him and Yuki are, si are siblings and what they had to go through growing up? How much more interesting would that be to see how that affects her and how she views him and their growing relationship? Remember, this is a romantic comedy. I need to follow the romance, not dumb teen kid melodrama. And if we want to like pick apart the family drama, part of the reason that doesn't work is they never do anything with Yuki in it. We never really see from her perspective what it was like growing up in this family. What was it like to all of a sudden have the entire sense of responsibility and duty be thrust upon you because dad and your older brother left? They never did anything with it. Yeah, you learn as the show going on, she's become cold and calculating and the sense that the way she behaves is just sort of like a front so she can get some happiness but it never really goes any further with this. We never see Masachika confront his grandfather. We get one scene where he sees his mom and then it never goes anywhere. It just drops everything. The show never does anything with this forced drama that's trying to shove down our throats. And if you don't want to, you don't have to, but you need to do something in the meantime. Instead, we have this boring school president race and then we've just also got just scene after scene of backstory and drama, and it never goes anywhere. Now, some of you may be saying, oh, so it shouldn't even try? Is that so wrong to want to include some drama? No. I think it would have been great if it did it and put the effort into pulling it off. If you want an example of how this was done much better, and granted this show felt more like it had more of the drama elements first, whereas this was more zany, uh, Origairu is a perfectly good example of this. Yuki in Origairu is, funnily enough, a lot like the Yuki in this show. She is guarded. She hides a lot of what she's keeping inside herself. The difference is that th that Yuki does it not through wanting to fuck her brother. Um, 
But what's important is that when you get those glimpses of Yuki's backstory, when you see how her relationship with her mother is, with how her sister is, with how family friends are, you really felt like you were in her head and experiencing her emotions. And remember, we learned infinitely less about Origai Ryuki than we did this Yuki. But the difference is it knew how to use the emotions of the situation and take advantage of the drama in order to actually convey a story. This didn't do that. This was exposition, exposition, goofy joke, show over. Whereas in Origairu, it felt like emotions and character interactions and a plot that was born from it. So, yeah. What do I have to ultimately say about this show? It was funny. It started out strong. I was having a really good time. But by the time it was over, I just kind of sat there scratching my head being like, what was even the point of this or where is this going? If you really wanted to be a rom-com about a hot Russian girl and the class slacker, great. You could easily have done that. But you didn't. You wanted to do everything else. And I feel like this is a growing problem in a lot of these kinds of like rom-com animes where it feels like there is this desire to throw in a sense of like seriousness and drama because of how serious people take their waifus a lot of times, which is fine if you're going to put in the effort, but a lot of them aren't. And it's, I think, becoming a bit of a problem. But yeah, did you feel that way? Give me your thoughts about this show in the comments section below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did all of it work for you? Did none of it work for you? And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me next time where we're going to scope out, see if there's any more of those Russians in our anime. You can't take our anime. Take everything else, but not our anime.